it is indeed my proud privilege to extend a very warm welcome to Honorable President of India on this rare occasion of the meeting of the IFS probationers with him today and also introduce them to the Honorable President of India who has been known for his tremendous learning, knowledge, wisdom and the clear vision. Sir, this batch consists of 76 probationers of which two are foreign trainees from Royal Government of Bhutan and 28 Navy probationers. These probationers come from the diverse academic backgrounds including forestry, engineering, agriculture, pure sciences and life sciences from the premier institutions of the country. Almost all the regions and the states of our country are represented in this batch. Sir, this has become essential to bring about changes in procedures, rules and regulations and put in place a transparent as well as an efficient delivery mechanism for smooth flow of the goods and services for them from the forestry sector. To keep pace with the changing times, they are provided not only the latest technological but also sociological and managerial inputs so that they can work with the local institutions of decentralized governance such as Gram Sabha and Panchayats with confidence. Honorable Rashpati ji, this aspect of the need to work with local institutions has assumed paramount importance in the change paradigm to ensure meaningful partnership with forest dependent communities, especially drivers for their economic empowerment. It is truly a moment of great honor and pride for all of us that the first citizen of India has graced this occasion with his benign presence. Since last, last eight months, we, the provisioners of Indian Forest Service 2013-15 course, have been a part of this renowned service and undergoing the professional training in Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy, Dehradun, which is the alma mater for all the Indian forest officers. Here, we are not only trained as a manager and an administrator to excel in the technical aspects of forestry, but also molded as an empathetic facilitator to provide services to the people of India in the most effective and efficient manner. As a forest officer, I, our prime responsibility lies in the conservation and protection of flora, fauna and environment as a whole. At the same time, we cannot ignore the welfare of the citizens of our country. It is the need of the present times that we try to maintain the balance between the nature and the development. Forest is a renewable resource only if it is utilized in a sustainable and responsible manner. The pressure on forest is immense and will tentatively increase manifold in coming future. Thus, our role as a forest manager as well as a service provider is expanding by leaps and bounds. We have to seek the ways in which the conservation efforts run parallel to developmental activities rather than cancelling each other in due course of time. We cannot take the luxury of sacrificing one for the sake of the other. Being a part of this renowned service, we aspire and will try in our best capability to take forward the hard work and efforts put in by our predecessors to fulfill the mandate of the service and at the same time we will also try to bring about such innovations that will be in the welfare of the people of India and to the mankind around the globe as a whole. Thank you, sir. It is a matter of great honor and privilege for us to have gathered here for this solemn occasion. It was a dream that came true for all of us when we joined the Indian Forest Service. What could be more important than conserving and protecting trees and animals who can't speak for themselves? But serving is not all. What is important is serving with humility, honesty, integrity and accountability. These are the values that are inculcated in us through our training at our very own Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy. A probationer starts his day with an early morning PT. He then heads to the lecture hall for regular classes. Teachings are based in the form of group discussions, group assignments, group presentations, case studies, field-based learning, practical and many more. Evenings are spent on team games. We also engage ourselves with the activities of various clubs. There are regular cultural programs, movie shows, quiz competitions, photography competitions and sports events.
few of us would also be participating in the All India Forest Sports Meet to be held in Goa this November. We have also been publishing a magazine named Jungle Book. We had the opportunity to visit the western and northern part of India, which include, included states like Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Himachal Pradesh, and Jammu and Kashmir, where we could see the best forest and wildlife management practices in different ecosystems and also got exposed to the socio-economic conditions and cultural diversity. So we were enthralled to see India's unity in diversity. We are looking forward to visit the other parts of the country so as to gain more field experience. We had also been fortunate enough to interact with the veteran foresters who had joined this service 50 years ago and are still very active. We are glad that we are carrying forward their legacy. Today as I stand here, sir, on behalf of my colleagues, take a pledge to serve my country with full dedication and commitment. Thank you, sir. At the very outset, I welcome all of you to Rashtrapati Bhavan. I would also like to congratulate you for joining the Indian Forest Service, one of the premier All India Service. It speaks of your academic excellence because this is a very tough and difficult competitive examination where you are to succeed only through your sheer merit and excellence. You have displayed it. I congratulate you. By joining the Indian Forest Service, you have taken an important step forward in your professional career. This is just the beginning of you and have a very rewarding long career spreading over 33, 35 years since the days of your retirement. Forests have been an integral part of Indian ethos and culture. Our civilization has always derived its intellectual and spiritual strength from forests. The qualities such as tolerance, and assimilations are very unique to our ethos as the Indian civilization has its root in the forests. Forests, therefore, are not merely a resource, but they encompass culture, spiritual and intellectual heritage of this country the government has entrusted you with the responsibility of protecting this very valuable heritage. Dear trainees, being a forester, your task is not easy one. The challenges before you are complex and the expectations from you will always be very high. Most areas of this country need to be afforested the various services and goods provided by the forests such as clean water and air, biodiversity values, soil and water conservation need to be enhanced. Satisfying all these requirements is not an easy task and will require not only the skills and knowledge you will learn during your training, but also the use of modern technology to bring about such a change. However, with the hard work, determination and commitment towards your work, I am sure you will be able to fulfill the hopes and trust that country has reposed on you. Before I conclude, I will request you to continue with the journey of learning. You must keep abreast with the changing international and domestic forest management issues and adopt the best practice in your profession. I would like 
to advise you to remember Gandhiji's observations. Once he said, live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind.